Good morning everyone. It is Monday the 1st of March and we're going to come together uh, for our reading this morning to read John chapter 5 verses 1 to 15. So let's hear this together. Afterwards Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city near the Sheep Gate was the pool of Bethsaida with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people Blind, lame or paralysed lay on the porches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, Would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles come up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, Stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath. So the Jewish leaders objected. They said to the man who was cured, You can't work on the Sabbath. The law does not allow you to carry that sleeping mat. But he replied, The man who healed me told me, Pick up your mat and walk. Who said such a thing as that? They demanded. The man didn't know. For Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. But afterwards Jesus found him in the temple and told him, Now you are well, so stop sinning, or something even worse may happen to you. Then the man went and told the Jewish leaders it was Jesus who had healed him. Amen. It's a story of a miracle, um, which John recounts, which is well known within the Bible. Um, Maybe if you're quick enough to notice you'll see in some bibles that it jumps from verse 3 to verse 5 and there's no 4 but there's a little footnote and if you look at it it'll say that some manuscripts um, expand on verse 3 and say this as well waiting for a certain movement of the water for an angel of the lord came from time to time and stirred up the water and the first person to step in it after the water was stirred, stirred was healed of whatever disease he had So there was bubbles that would appear in that pool and people would believe that it was an angel coming down, putting their finger into the water and stirring it and if they could get into it, the day would be healed. Um, People who've studied the pool in that area of Jerusalem and the ruins have actually said there was a, a geological fault under the pool and from time to time air would be released which would come up and create bubbles. Who knows? But the people had faith in these bubbles, that it would be them that would heal them. Whereas Jesus was trying to teach this man that we need to have faith in the right place. Trust the right person, the right reason. Trust Christ. Now Jesus came in for criticism for it because it was the Sabbath. It was their holy day. And he had told the man to get up and walk and carry his mat. And the Pharisees were furious. Because they had all these rules and regulations about what you were and were not allowed to do on the Sabbath. But what Jesus had done was help someone in need. Regardless of the day or the place, Jesus came alongside that man and helped him in a very practical way. He met him where his need was. And you know, that creates a challenge for us, doesn't it? Do we help people where they need it? Do we meet the need where we see it? You know, there's lots of examples of how we can do that. Um, we talk about how we support mission uh, and in strain, yes, we do. And we're very good at supporting mission. And it's an important part of what we do. But part of that mission is not just about God's word. It's also about the needs that people have. You think of food bank. You think of women's aids. You think of the the other charities that we've supported in practical ways. It's meeting that need because then that allows us to be able to talk to them about what else is going on in their lives. Jesus went back to that man and said, now stop sinning. Now we've no thought that his sinning was him talking to the Pharisees and telling them who it was that healed them. That's not that. It's his life in general. Where Jesus is saying to the man, now stop sinning so that something worse won't happen to you. That's something worse, that you you lose your soul. But rather trust God, trust in what he has done for you. Jesus healed the man in a physical way. But he also wants to heal us 
in a spiritual way. He just wants us to trust him and have faith. I trust during this journey of Lent, if you don't really have that faith, that you do surrender to God and let him in. Let's pray together. Father, this morning again, thank you for the weekend which has passed and thank you for another wonderful Monday morning. A time whenever we can just again worship you uh, and, and appreciate who you are and what you have done for us. We can read your word and we can learn from it and we can accept the challenges that it brings to us as to how we live our lives for you. Lord, you are wonderful, you are great. You have given so much for us and we thank you for that. We just ask and pray that you'd be with us now and help us and strengthen us this day. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in this morning. Uh, good to see your names pa popping up online and, and good morning to you all. And I pray that the rest of this day um, you stay safe and that you're blessed. And I'll see you again tomorrow morning. In the meantime, take care. Bye for now.